Why do you look taller than me? Because I have a long torso. I don't like it. I'm hunched too. Hunch more. Then I'll just... <laughs> <laughs> Another ask Queera and Lauren. Hey. I'm Lauren. Hey. This is my wife, and I'm sure everyone knows that. We also have a band called The Hemis. Check it out. Yeah. Check out our first single sex ed. New one coming in soon. In coming the in description. Hot. Put in the description. Yeah, I'll put yeah, I will. Yeah. yeah. Yay! Yeah. Go Hemis! Go Hemis! Go Hemis! Um, comment below what you think the name means. Anyways, today we're going to be doing a answering your queer sex questions that you guys asked us on Instagram. You actually gave us a lot of really good ones, so I'm excited. We love queer sex. And as a queer couple who has sex, I feel like we can hopefully answer these questions. The answer for all of them is communication. Honesty. Consent. Consent. This is a really good first question because we are a long-term couple. We've been together for five years almost. Oh, five years. We've okay, yeah. We've known each other for five years, but we started dating a month after we met. So lesbians, you all know. Someone asked, how frequently do long-term queer couples actually have sex? This totally depends on the couple, but yeah, I do want to address that people are always searching for what's the correct amount of time: a week, a month, a day. Like I feel like people are always constantly trying to live up to these standards, even though like they don't exists. It's whatever you want. It's whatever your body wants and what your partner wants. And mm -hmm. yeah, I so feel yeah, like there's, there's a stereotype that's like you lose the honeymoon phase, which yes, I feel like it's normal to have more sex in the beginning because you're like, yeah. you're curious about someone new. And the it's, hormones. Yeah. You're excited, right? Well, that excitedness doesn't go away. It just changes. Everything's going to change, especially in long-term relationships, you're gonna see so much of this. The thing that affects sex is whatever emotion you're in, whatever energy you're in. When one of us is like depressed or just like has, is going through a lot, we're not gonna be in the mood and the other person respects that. Yeah. And so that means that there could be like weeks or months where you don't have sex. Doesn't mean you don't love the person any less. It just means like we'll focus more on you and what energy you're in and like not forcing or anything. I think that's a really important thing to note is like the longer you're with each other, the longer you see each other in these episodes of like, wow, I'm going through a hard time. And sex isn't usually on the mind. Sometimes it is for some people. Sometimes it's not for some people. Yeah. Like it just depends. It's if you want to prioritize it. Yeah. It's are you making sex a priority right now in the relationship or maybe you're gonna make emotional availability more important in the relationship at mm -hmm. that time. Yeah. So it's all up to you and what you prioritize as a couple. That was a <laughs> bitch! Uh, that was a good ass answer. Video done, thank you. Bye. How do I communicate my needs in bed better? I want more penetration than oral. I think that it is perfectly okay and actually encouraged to talk about sex when you're not having sex. Talk about sex. Yeah. Before sex. Then you don't have to do it all in the moment and then like the other person has to process the answer and then it becomes a conversation. We talk about sex all the time. I'm actually reading this book called fuck's it called? It's called Come Together. The Science and Art of Creating Lasting Sexual Connections by Emily Nagoski. In it, she says that in long-term partnerships, if you have a healthy sex life, then you're most likely talking about sex more than you're even having sex. So, just a little fact. And I feel like that's actually true for us too. Everyone communicates differently. Sometimes it's hard to just even get the words out because like we've grown up like don't talk about sex ever. So it's hard to like get what you want in sex by communicating because we've been taught not to really talk about it. Yeah. So I feel like in order to get the courage to talk about something like as vulnerable as like penetration and stuff, maybe bring up something that like in your eyes is a little less vulnerable like, hey, like I 
want to make out more with less tongue like that's just like an example and then like once you do that once you'll feel more comfortable to bring up something that's even more scary to communicate yeah. you know what i mean i think it's important to build that up if you don't have the courage yet to say something that's like that like vulnerable good advice thank you lavrin this is a really good question well not many people talk about like sex and autism so let's see if mm -hmm. we can answer this someone said it's difficult for my gf to go down on me because of sensory issues and she's autistic okay. any tips I wish I could get into someone's mind and like know what sensory what specific what sensory gets issue? overloaded you know what I mean because yeah. a lot could happen it could just be the feeling that is too overwhelming like it could be a Smells, lot of different things textures something that's helped me is making sure I'm comfortable with wherever I am so whether like if you want your partner to like go down on you communicate it and if they come back and say well I get really overstimulated well maybe like make them feel really comfortable before they like go yeah. down on you so like for example like if they want to yeah if they want to this obviously is, this is only if they want to yeah you have to make sure it's consented and everything yeah. because if they're full-on like no i can't do this like you kind of have to respect them in yeah. the end because that's it's their body and they mm -hmm get to choose how they want to act. Going down could even be like in the shower. That just, that's just an example of like changing the scenario or you could make sure the lighting is good, make sure like there maybe there's music playing, like whatever way to get their sensories to be as calm as they can mm -hmm. before they do that, obviously with consent that they want to do it. I was, I was literally gonna say that. <laughs> I feel like it's really important to ask them what they specifically get overwhelmed about. Yeah. I think that's where, that, that's the beginning. Is there anything that I can do to make you not feel, like not have that be overstimulated? I also like take all of our answers with a grain of salt. Like we are not in your heads and we're not in your situation. So we're just giving our advice based on our personal relationship yes. and our experience. And what a fitting time to tell you that this video is sponsored by Dipsy. <laughs> Dipsy. If you don't know, Dipsy is an app full of hundreds of short, sexy audio stories designed by women, for women, or AFAB, or non-binary, or honestly, any gender identity. It's very inclusive. They have so many queer stories on there. Oh my gosh. Sometimes when I'm craving like a little escape from everyday life, I go on Dipsy and just like immerse myself in the different fantasies that are on there. Oh my God, like I listened to one the other day that was like these two women from like the 1800s and they were escaping, they were like at a ball and they were escaping into the bathroom and like hooking up in the stall and it was so hot. There's fantasy series with vampires, Greek gods, cute um, Irish men, fairy smut, almost anything, Dipsy's gonna have it. If you wanna spice up your me time and you're queer and you like friends to lovers storylines, check out the one called Les Rebound. Also like there's one where it's like two masks and they're friends and then it's another like friends to lovers one. The tradition. Ah, mask, who's mask, my mask? Dipsy brings so many scenarios to life with immersive soundscapes, realistic characters. There's a growing library. New content is released every week, so you're never gonna get bored on that app. They also have sleep stories you can go to sleep to, wellness sessions like self-touch sessions, and they also have written stories. So why don't you let Dipsy be your place to spice up your meantime, time, explore your fantasies with yourself or your partner, or maybe just relax and unwind at the end of the day. So for my subscribers, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial. When you go to dipsystories.com slash Kira, that's D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash K-E-A-R-A, it's on the screen. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash Kira. My GF and I are serious overthinkers who struggle with initiating. Please help. Same. Relatable. <laughs> <laughs> it's very hard to find like any time of the day for me to calm my mind. It takes a lot of like transitioning from like my current mindset into a mindset of like sexy times. Me too. And like no one talks about that. No one talks about how hard the transition is and how much energy it can take going from one mindset to another. And it's even more with some autistic people as well. I am that autistic person that like really struggles with that. Same. Something that has helped us is Say you say it. So we got this game a long time ago that is actually supposed to help with initiating. Mm -hmm. And we have proof that, well, I want to show you the proof because I didn't document it, but it's proof. No. <laughs> 
<laughs> but if we did, it'd be hot. That's so hot. <laughs> but um, they're cards and they're in envelopes and you basically open it up and it's kind of like a dare or a truth and it's supposed to spark something. We got one that has to do with like your senses and stuff and it ended up initiating sex. Yeah, it bridged the gap between like mm -hmm. whatever state we were in to being in like a sexy mindset. So yeah, maybe check that out. I think this could be a conversation also between the two of you. Like what frame of mind is it easiest to go into sex? And Emily Nagoski talks about this a lot in her book. I'm like yeah. pretty, pretty much getting this from her book. And it's, you know, very person dependent. So it's like, how can you assist your partner and how can your partner assist you in that transition? You can talk mm -hmm. about that actually. Yeah, and like by, like we've talked about that and You've been like, if I'm having an anxious day, no fucking way. No. And so no I chance. know that when Kira's having an anxious day, like it's just a cuddle and watch Netflix or mm -hmm. just spend some quality time together at night. Yeah. Whereas like if you're having a great, amazing day, then yeah, we can we can try and just see what happens. And I think it's also really important to just like try. And yeah. if the other person's like, no, I'm not in the mood, then I think it's really important to practice like not being attached and being yeah. like, okay, respect. Not taking offense. I agree. Yeah. Oh, my butt hurts. Oh no. Someone said, how do you avoid comparing yourself to them in terms of your bodies? I'm talking like, I'm thinking like in bed, like someone is comparing their body to their partner's body in oh. bed. That would definitely get me out of the moment too. And that, that's hard. Cause I think it, it comes down to like working on your own body confidence first. So then you won't feel the need to compare. Mm -hmm. But that is like, believe me, can be a long journey. I think really loving yourself is the priority at that point if you're comparing yourself. And I think it's really cool that you have noticed that you've been doing that because a lot of people do that and don't even notice that they're doing that. And so like, mm -hmm. since you've noticed, I think you're already like, one step ahead into your like self-love journey. Mindset flows in and out. Say like one day you're not comparing and then one day you are comparing. Be easy on yourself. And if you get out of the moment, you get out of the moment and just give your body the love that it needs. Yeah. Do mirror work. Not necessarily like standing in the front of the mirror and being naked, but like just staring at your like in your eyes and like genuinely like telling yourself like even if you don't mean it yet, being like, I love you, you're so strong, and you're hot as fuck, and you're sexy as fuck. Something that helped me is like, every time I, cause I went through a big episode of like joint pain and it hurting really bad, is I got into the habit of every time I looked at myself in the mirror, instead of being like, oh my God, you're weak as fuck. Just staring at myself and being like, I'm here for you and I love you. Every time I looked in the mirror. And because I did that, like I now like, the self love is gonna keep growing. Obviously I still have work to do, but that really helped with my confidence in myself. Someone asked how to give pleasure without touching genitals. My partner is uncomfortable with it. Oh. Yeah, that's so valid. There's so many ways that you can experience pleasure and like share pleasure without going to your genitals. You can literally like give your partner a back massage or like one of those like tickle thing, like you know, like the light like tickle touch. I don't like that. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, when you're in elementary school and you're sit, you're all sitting in a row and you're all like drawing on each other's backs. I actually, yeah. lo I loved that personally. But that's just proof of like, you don't need to be touching someone's genitals to like feel pleasure from your skin. You can mm -hmm. actually feel pleasure from all over your body. You can even just like make out and that could be like pleasure enough for you. I would say <laughs> like experiment. Like this is like an yeah. exciting time to just like be experimental with it and like try different things. There's actually some people who can orgasm without even touching their genitals. Like you can get an orgasm from some, like from touching your nipples or like even like kissing your ear. Like you'd be surprised. Okay. 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 Hot. Even just like talking about sex and like being like, okay, if you could do it anywhere, where would you go? And I feel like just talking about it in that way and like yeah. flirting and stuff like also gives me pleasure. Yeah. It gives that like arousal and like just like, ooh, yes. like slay. You know? Slay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you and your partner can go on a date to a sex store and like look around at the stuff, maybe get a new toy, get a book, get a game. Having less sex since moving in together, how do we get back to it? It fluctuates. Like yeah. it's like you just moved in, that's a lot. That's a lot, we just moved in. A lot. <laughs> and we can say like, 
we haven't had sex that much since moving in and that's okay because we've both been like fucking settling into it mm -hmm. and like we're both autistic and moving and changes so much like mm -hmm. that like we're just really spending quality time with each other and I think that's really important to note as you just went through a huge change Yeah, and like there's going to be times where you both are overwhelmed or it's just not happening and then it'll like it'll go in waves mm -hmm. so i think it's nothing to be worried about again like you could ask like oh like if you what's what's what place do you want to have sex in this house like and yeah. then like that I could like spark that. something you I know like that, yeah. it's like ooh kitchen counter it's like ooh <laughs> yeah <laughs> the big bathtub <gasps> ooh <laughs> I also really want to bring up the point of like, when you're putting pressure on sex, that's like, to me, that's an immediate, we're not having yeah, sex. No. Even if it's you putting pressure on yourself to have sex and like, why are we not having sex? Is there something wrong with the relationship? That's gonna not make you want to have sex either. Like, sex has to be something that's like so, it just like happens unrestrained without any Forcing so that could also be a thing like if you're getting in your head too much like I've definitely experienced this then you're not gonna be horny like yeah, literally it's kind of just realizing you know what hey, it's okay that we're not having sex right now yeah. Do I love them any less? No, okay, cool like communicate yeah. with them if you're like me and I need reassurance I go, hey, do you still love me? Yeah, when we're not having sex and Kira goes Yes, of course. No one's dying if no one's having sex. You know what I mean? Like sex is not, it doesn't have to be the main component of a relationship if that's not your style. Like there's literally so many and we could talk about this forever, but do you want to pick the last one? Okay. How to stay present slash not stressed about taking too long to finish while someone is going down on you. Oh. That ah. is like something <laughs> I, I can really, I feel like a lot of people can relate to. Mm -hmm. I. I have ADHD and there's a lot going on up there. <laughs> I actually have recently discovered something that really helps me kind of stay focused is playing music and having some sort of other thing that's kind of stimulating my senses because that helps me focus. So I guess just try to find something that helps you stay in the present moment and like maybe even when you're touching yourself, like what helps you what helps you stay in the moment in general like say when you're studying or like when you're working like what helps you stay focused for me listening to something so we did that and it helped me focus or like talking to each other more like if it's yes. too silent then the mind can drift touching the other person say if they're like going down on you like playing with their hair like touching something to like be like, okay, this is the person. Like, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. Just like something mm -hmm. that helps you stay focused. That's obviously just my brain, but ask yourself those questions. Um, as far as the like stressing about taking too long, I feel like there's a, you've told me this before, I learned this from this one, mm -hmm. is there's a big stigma around having to finish when you're having sex and that's what sex means is finishing. Mm. If you are having a good time and they're like down on you and you're just like enjoying it, just enjoy it. And I feel like by living in that present moment, it really helps. You don't need to finish to have a good time. Yeah. Because as soon as you put pressure on something, you're not going to fucking finish. Yeah. And you get good inside luck. your head and you start panicking because you're like, yeah. oh my God, like, are they getting tired? Like, yeah. oh my God, like I hope I'm not like tiring them and then it's yeah. all my fault and it's my, no, like it's yeah. okay if it's you don't, really fine. if you don't finish. Last one. How did y'all stay close in a long distance relationship? The tension was what? The tension it built. It did. It built so much. It was like, as soon as we met up in person, it was like, lock the door for two hours. Like, let's go. Three times a day. <laughs> <laughs> for context, if you don't know, our first year of our relationship was long distance. Like fully long distance, like different countries long distance. Yeah. So we literally talked like 24 seven and we also FaceTimed a lot. And we also like did phone sex, like that's a thing. Sexting, pictures. And if you're not comfortable with it, like enjoy that little tension that you have. Like when you're away from each other, like I feel like that's like a really exciting thing to like build the tension. It is. And then like have a date when you're gonna finally meet up and then like get excited, you know? It was kind of like exciting. It was nice. It was exciting. Like yeah. I remember like, I'm just like putting myself back in that like mindset and I was just, it made me horny all the time. Same. I was, I was like, so I was like, fuck, I wish Kira was here. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, but this is like kind of like, 
Yeah. Gotta wait for this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm celibate. That's how I see that. Yeah. It's like kind of like hot. It's like being fun. like, now you gotta wait for me. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Gosh, thanks for thanks for watching. Yay. Let me know if any of this helped you. Um, comment below if you have anything to add to any of these questions. Like we are not sex experts, so again, spoke from our own experiences. Mm -hmm. What we said might not work for you, and that's okay. Communicate with yourself. Communicate with your partner, and and go stream sex ed by the Hemis because this is a very fitting video to drop that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Willow. Willow said, Willow do said, it. You better do it. Right? Hey? Um, yeah. Hey? If you want to follow either of us, I will put all of our social handles in the description below. Mine is Kira.Graves on TikTok, Kira Graves on Instagram. What's Mine your? is What's Up Labyrinth on both. On both. And where are the Hemis on Spotify? The Hemis. The H E M M I E S. Hemis. See you next time. Bye. Bye. We love you. We love you. Go, go.